In this video, I'll take you behind the scenes of how I plan my travel art workshops. Travel is my twin passion to making art and combining art with travel in a workshop with creative kindred spirits is absolutely my favorite thing to do in the whole world. After years of travel interruptions and lockdowns and quarantines and too much time alone, I'm finally getting to travel and teach again. I'm getting ready to teach a workshop in Paris. And so I thought I would bring you behind the scenes and just show you a snapshot of part of what goes into my international workshop planning process. This is a companion video to a couple others I made. One is all about choosing a travel sketchbook. And then I have another video all about the art supplies that I'm bringing to travel as lightly as possible when I teach creativity workshops. So what kind of supplies am I using? I have a whole separate video all about that. And also in this video, I will share a little bit about my facilitator training workshop. In addition to teaching creativity workshops and traveling with people, I absolutely love showing other people how they can lead their own meaningful creativity workshops whether in person or online. I do a really comprehensive facilitator training program once a year, and you can get all the details for that on my website, which is visualjournalstudio.com, and I'll include a link to my website in the description. Hi, and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Lisa Sonora, and this channel is all about using your creativity to support your personal and spiritual growth healing and well-being. So here we are behind the scenes of my workshop planning headquarters, AKA my dining room table, which also happens to be inside my art studio. And the part I'm gonna share with you today in this video, because there's several steps to planning for a workshop this particular video is going to be about how I plan out the session of what I'm going to be teaching during the workshop, kind of the hands-on inspiration um, part of this. This is my visual thinking and planning in action, and then I'll take these ideas onto the computer. There are many other steps to planning a workshop which I go into in great detail in my facilitator training course. I've been teaching facilitators, I've been teaching everyday people with no teaching experience actually how to lead their own creativity workshops. And I think it, leading workshops is such a great way to experience and deepen your own creative practice, but also to share what you love with others. So I've developed a facilitator training for teaching visual journaling and also incorporating creative workshop practices into your therapy or coaching practice. If you're a therapist or a coach and wanna do activities with your clients or students. And some of the things that I go into detail in that workshop include how to create a proposal to teach a workshop, finding locations and what you need in a workshop location, depending on what you're teaching, how far in advance you have to start looking and even where to look, how to know where to hold a particular workshop, all of the details and nuts and bolts around permissions and waivers and workshop descriptions, how to create those, and then workshop marketing, which is a whole giant subject. How do you get the word out about your workshop? How do you let people know what's happening? Payments, pre-workshop planning and prep, which is partly what I'll cover in this video, and then planning your sessions. There is a tremendous amount of work that goes into teaching a workshop. The, I mean, there's the work of doing the workshop itself when the time comes. But in general, I usually give myself at least 12 to 18 months in advance of when I know the workshop date is going to be 
to do all of these steps. So it doesn't happen super quickly. If you're doing a shorter local workshop, you can compress your timeline. You can also compress your timeline if you have a ready audience. So if you're doing this for a school group or a church group or a travel group that you belong to or your local public library, anywhere where there's a ready audience, and you don't need to like rustle up all the people and have the marketing lead time, then you can compress the timeline. But since I teach international workshops and people are often planning their travel at least a year in advance, especially if they work and they're taking one of their precious weeks of vacation to come on a workshop with me, I try to give people as much advance notice as possible. I'm filming this in September of 2022. So, you know, we haven't been traveling that much in the last couple of years, but I actually am on my way to teach in Paris this month. And so I just thought I'd give you this behind the scenes, like I mentioned in the intro, of what goes into planning my workshop session. Okay, a lot, a lot. So I have this whole array of visual materials to work with. I also want to mention that I did a whole separate video that I will link in the description that is all about how do I choose the art supplies for the art travel workshops and put those together. So that's a whole separate video that I made for you about this workshop. So after you watch this one, you can go get a whole bunch more ideas in the video that I'll link in the description. So like I mentioned in the travel art supply video, I love to start with clear intentions. So this is part of the workshop planning process where I am, you know, figuring out in advance, what is this workshop about? What are the objectives and how, how will what I want to share with people or what I want people to take away from the workshop, how will I um, accomplish those objectives based on my lesson plan and the art materials that I will either provide for the students or I'll ask the students to bring. And by the way, I love giving people lots of pre-trip info, so things they can print out, things they can do to start getting excited about the workshop. I always think that the workshop starts when you sign up for it. And if that's a year in advance or six months out or even a few weeks out, it's so exciting to be able to look forward to a trip and plan it. So I love to give people some visual journaling prompts and things they can do that are totally optional to help them get in the mindset of what we're going to be doing together and prime that creative pump. So. The workshop planning, I do it like this. Let me show you. It's very visual for me. I am a visual thinker. So here is, here are what some of my notes look like. And I have these organizational folders that I picked up. Actually, I got these in a shop in Paris. I think they're from Japan. Anyway, I have them large. I love to organize details in here. This one I'm going to be putting my itinerary and uh, travel things into because it's letter size paper. But then I also have these smaller ones that I can fold a half, of, half a piece of paper like this and these will fit in here. So in advance I've created itinerary and printouts that people will get during the workshop. So I always print some of these for myself to see, you know, how they'll look, what they'll look like. But my note taking process <laughs> is very messy. So I have several visual journals that I keep and notes I'm taking, like if I'm just sitting on the phone, like talking to one of my co-teachers or I'm, I'm in my studio, I will create random notes like this on whatever piece of paper I have handy, tearing out pieces of my own sketchbooks to make notes. Now, this seems very disorganized, but what I do is I just make sure to collect everything in one place so that 
I can find it. And then eventually these notes get all typed up into a Google Doc where I can share it with whoever needs to see it. But, and then I always love keeping these notes afterward because I love the analog artifacts that come from the creative thought process. These are just things that will end up in my own Paris sketchbook, probably all my planning notes. So that is part of my visual planning process, having all these random notes and then um, things that I collect. Here are some other printables I'm preparing to give to the students. And then I start looking through my piles of inspiration. So let me just show you. So one of the things I'll look at, let me move this out of the way. Things are flying around. I work pretty messy, <laughs> if you can't tell. So this is one of my uh, sketchbook projects that I did with a group in Italy. And so, and I've got dozens and dozens of travel sketchbooks that I've kept around the world for myself or in classes I've taught. So what I like to do is pull some of these out, grab a cup of coffee, and just look through my own travel sketchbooks and make notes about things that I want to tell people or I start formulating my lesson. So what will be the content of the lesson? What were the intentions for the workshop? So one of the intentions for the Paris sketchbook workshop is we want to, and I'm teaching this with other teachers, our promise in a way is you can fill an entire sketchbook during your week in Paris with us. And so in my workshop planning session, I am thinking about how can I make it easy for people to obliterate the blank pages of their sketchbooks and how to fill those. And I'm gonna be working a lot with collage and ephemera. This is how my sketchbooks really look. I, I incorporate things from what I'm finding, you know, newspapers as well as drawing on site. And then I do a lot of journaling and writing inside of my sketchbooks, also drawings. And so I look through these for ideas of what I'm going to ask people to think about in their lesson. And so looking at my own visual journals reminds me and gives me some ideas of what I want to do. I never really teach the same workshop twice. I can't help it. It's always different. Then I start gathering examples for the ephemera that my students are going to collect. And so I, I use these plastic zipper bags, and in here are examples from my own collection. I showed a few of these things inside the other video about supplies. But since my pages are very layered, I want to show my students examples at the beginning of the workshop of things to look out for. This is a map of all the Paris streets. Um, yeah, that I'm going to tear out some pages. So all of the different types of ephemera, postcards, things you find on bulletin boards that are um, expired. <laughs> I love looking at art supply store bulletin boards, cards, greeting cards, stickers, labels, things from magazines, words and phrases are always such a fun, important thing to look for. Things from museum gift shops. So I want to give my students some visual examples of what they can collect as well as I might even give them some things. So. I've got all of these postage stamps from around the world. These are the kinds of things you collect when you're a mixed media visual journal artist. So I'll probably bring some of these to give my students. This is another really fun thing. This is a mythology book 
that I bought all of these phrases at an art store in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Someone cut up a, a book on mythology and it's just got the wonderful phrases in it. But I think if you have an old travel book on a place you're going or a book on a theme, like maybe a novel set in Paris or something like that, you could cut up phrases like this if you were so inclined. So I might bring some of these to give to people. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to look through more of my ephemera and just see what grabs me. And I might just find postcards or something in Paris. My stamp collection. I love, ma I love putting these in my paintings and in my visual journals. So that's what we have here. I have these on my table because I have a certain way that I like to take notes when I travel and I love to have a really tiny notebook. I might fill up several of these on a trip, but I want to remember to tell people to get a very small notebook that they can take notes in. That way you always have something to write on and you can take notes without worrying about spoiling your perfect, wonderful sketchbook pages. A lot of people don't want to put random notes in their sketchbook. So as long as you have a place to take notes, you can decide if you want to add the words to the page later. So these are super handy and I just have them here to remind myself to give these to people. Now we're getting to one of my absolute favorite parts of workshop planning, which is I will look through my library and take out books so usually they're travel books or art books related to a place that we're going. So in this case, Paris. So I will look through what do I have? What can I dig into and look at to get me inspired about the trip? Usually I love to collect travel books and I'll show you some examples of the type of art books and sketchbooks you might think of looking for if you're going to do a workshop like this. Okay, so this is a wonderful book called Forever Paris, and it's all about different Paris walks with maps. Oh, it looks like there's some water damage there, but I just love this book. So what I will do is revisit this and see where do I want to, maybe I, if I don't bring it with me, I will photograph some of the pages just to remind myself. And I have a very extensive Google map. Whenever I go to a place, I will create a Google map for that year. So in this case, Paris 2022. So then I can compare it to Paris 2017 or whenever I was there last time. And so then I'm always collecting my favorite places and things I want to do. This book I picked up when I was in Nice, France. And what I love about this, it is so unique. It's, first of all, it's bilingual, English, French, which made it easy for me to read. But it is about all the different shops. It's like a, a shopping guide, but it's all done in sketches. Aren't these lovely? I just had to have this. And it, it gave me some ideas of how I might want to illustrate my own travel journals or places if I was so inclined, but I just thought this was so clever. And for me, this was the ultimate souvenir of Nice. Oh, it looks like it says volume two. So they've done this before. Um, I'll have to look this up again and see if they have them in other locations. But I just uh, picked this up at a tea shop that I went to in Nice, and I just had to have it. Yeah, here's the tea shop <laughs> right there. An organic tea shop, wonderful tea. Ray Dunn is one of my favorite artists, and you may have seen this book. This is her artist sketchbook of France by Chronicle Books, and Chronicle just does the most beautiful book design. It's got her photographs, but also her writing and sketches. How fun is this? So this is really inspiring. 
This is one of my favorite things. We share some similar obsessions. The green chairs in the um, Luxembourg garden. This is something I'm always trying to find the exact shade of green paint because they're quite unique. So my sketchbooks also have these all kinds of green color swatches. Look how she does these little landscape sketches, writing, so fun, so inspiring. So this gives me ideas for my own sketchbook as well as something I can recommend my students look for in advance if they want to get inspired. In that same vein, this is one of my absolute favorite, although I got it upside down. One of my absolute favorite travel journals, it's called La Road Trip by Vivian Swift, a traveler's journal of love in France. The writing in here is exquisite. She has such a sense of humor. Um, travel, we all, yes, we all do it, but some of us do it better than others. This is where I come in. So yes. I love all of her travel stories and travel tips. She's also an artist and so illustrates everything. And it's about her relationship and traveling with her husband, but also just full of her artwork, full of all the ups and downs that happen on travel. So I just cannot recommend this book enough. So beautiful and so inspiring and a wonderful read. It's not just visually beautiful, it's a wonderful read. Another option, this is something I pulled off my shelf. Our workshop, the Paris sketchbook is not at all about urban sketching and I'm not an urban sketcher. However, I love this book, Urban Watercolor Sketching, just because of all the way um, Felix, the author Felix Scheinberger, does these beautiful loose sketches with ink and watercolor. And actually, I have brought this book with me to share with my students. I've brought it all the way to Europe many times because a lot of people feel really self-conscious about drawing or sketching. And I'm like, look, you can be very abstract and loose. You don't have to know how to draw. So this is so much inspiration and I will look through here for ideas for my own sketchbook. And then I certainly put this on my recommended reading list for students. Really fun book. When I travel, I buy books. So the, I, I'm almost done here. I'm gonna show you two more books, both that I bought in Paris. But I think books and supporting a local bookshop or a local artist is such a great way to get a souvenir of your trip, but also get something you might not find at home. And so this is a book of Delacroix watercolors when he went to Morocco. And it also is trilingual, <laughs> so I could read it. But wow, look at these pictures and tones. I can't, I mean, I never get tired of looking at these. I saw some of his work in a museum. There's actually a Delacroix Museum in Paris. And another artist recommended this book to me and I, I left her studio and went right to the bookshop and bought it. I was so excited to bring this home with me from Paris. Yeah, so the books end up getting heavy. What I try to do, since I travel in a carry-on, is I try to leave with a half full carry-on and then I can come home with a full carry-on. And often I have to check my carry-on because it's too heavy. So this, this is a book I bought in Paris a long time ago, I think 2009. I met this artist, I saw his show at a gallery and I think the gallery owner, I was in love with his paintings. They're amazing. And um, I it didn't have it in my budget to buy one of his paintings, but they had this beautiful book of his work, Troy Henriksen. And so I, I took this out to remind myself to see what he's got going on in Paris now. He's an American 
painter who's been living in Paris and working there a long time, but I just love this book about him, his life story, and then it has so many of his paintings, and I just love his work so much. So I thought, I'm gonna go see what's going on and let me look at his paintings. And then I got this idea like, hmm, I wonder if they have payment plans. Like I just really am determined to own one of his paintings. So that is on my agenda for Paris this time. I wanna hunt down, hunt you down, Troy, <laughs> and claim one of your paintings as my own. So this is reminding me of something I wanna do to mentally, emotionally prepare for the trip and get excited about it. Ideas of things I can share with my students. There's so many resources. You can look on my Amazon link in the description below too if you want. I tried, I think I have most of these books in there, at least the ones that you can get on Amazon. But I am an extreme book person. Let me just say, I love collecting books as much as I collect art supplies. Books are just so essential to my creative life. And so I always think books are such a great investment. So I'm always collecting. If I don't have the book myself, it's on my list of inspirational books to look for. And every year there are more and more books about creativity and people's travel sketchbooks and art books. So they are so inspiring. So this is a snapshot really of what goes on behind the scenes in my workshop travel planning. I hope you enjoyed it and are taking away ideas for if you wanna teach workshops, definitely follow the links that I have in the description. I've got more resources for you. But also if you just are looking for ideas for kind of doing your own DIY workshop for yourself when you're traveling, I think doing as much pre-trip preparation as you can will help you a lot in framing your own intentions for your trip and what you hope to experience as an artist traveling the world. Oh my gosh, you made it all the way, almost to the end. Thank you so much. That was quite a ramble, wasn't it? If you're interested in taking a workshop with me in person or online, or you'd like to get more info about possibly participating in the upcoming facilitator training program, you can visit my website at visualjournalstudio.com. It's got all the information on all the current workshops going on. I've got a link to that in the description below, along with suggested videos for you to watch next. Thanks so much for being here, and I hope to see you in a workshop one of these days, whether it's in person or online. The facilitator training happens all online, and it's with people from all over the world. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.